What's up everybody? I am Ingram. I'm one of the Minecrafters. Today we're going to take a look at our new version of Icehenge. Icehenge 2.2.0 was just released uh, just a couple days ago. We're going to talk about downloading the server, downloading the client, the changelog, some forums for you to get help, and finally we will close out with how to make Icehenge look awesome by using the Sfax texture pack. If you know certain things already, you can use the jump links down in the bottom to skip to different parts of the video. First things first, you're going to have to actually download or get actually to this this front page where we're going to do everything. So if you go to themindcrafters.com, that will take you to our main page. And then up at the top, you'll see Mod Packs, The Minecrafters, Icehenge. If you just go ahead and click that, it'll take you actually to this main page. And we try and keep this page updated all the time with everything that's going on. So we'll always refer to you or refer you to this actual page. So to see what happened in version 2.2, we'll go to the 2.2 change log, click this link right here. It takes us actually to a post on the forums where we say exactly what changed and what happened. So there are a couple of updates, um, a couple mods. We had to remove dragon mount. That kind of sucks because I really wanted my dragon mount. Um, but it was it was interfering with um, the blizzard thing, the blizz thing from thermal expansion, which is kind of critical. So go ahead and use the Chocobos instead to get flight um, and to you know breed stuff up. Um, the following mods are all updated. We have better storage, big reactors, Mistcraft, um, thermal expansion got an update. Ars Magica got an update. That was kind of a big one. Um, Landing craft got an update. All these here in this list got an update and. I would say probably one of the biggest is we squashed a couple ID conflicts, we squashed a couple other bugs, and most of these mods are now actually, they've been updated to the last version that will be supported for one, uh, Minecraft 1.6.4. So these are probably going to be the last updates we see on the 1.6 stuff, um, but we'll play it by ear. If there's something big that comes out, you know, we're, we'll we'll make sure we got everything updated. Um, as far as 1.7, I know a lot of people have been asking for that, and I will say that something is in the works. So, stay poised. Um, so that's pretty much it for the changelog. You can come here, you can come back here. Um, just be careful if you're trying to upgrade to 2.0 world. You, Ars Magica had a major, major overhaul, and it is actually much better. Um, but the mechanics and the blocks and everything changed significantly. So just be aware of that. All right, so if we go back here, the first thing we're going to do um, is, or the next thing we're going to do rather, is we're going to download the server. And if you need the old server, the 2.0 version, of course, that button is right there. But we'll go ahead and grab this. This will take us to a Dropbox link, and we can go ahead and download that. It is a fairly fat mod. It's a, a mod pack. It's 176 uh, meg. Got quite a lot of stuff in it, you know, to make sure we ramp up the awesome. So I will download that and then we will open it and we'll be right back. So once that has finished downloading, go ahead and do show in folder. If you're doing this on somebody, a browser other than Chrome, make sure that this thing is not automatically unzipping. Um, it, it doesn't so much matter for this, what we're doing right now, but it, in general, it can be a problem when you're dealing with Minecraft stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab, um, here's our zip file. If we double click that, we can see that I packed it on Mac. Thanks for that little little thing there. Um, but basically the way that Minecraft servers work is it's really just a folder on your computer that just happens to launch a JavaScript, uh, not JavaScript, a Java application. So we'll, I just drag that folder, just extract it somewhere. Um, I have it here on my desktop. I'll put it down here so we can see. And if we just go ahead and open this up, we'll see that we have pretty much everything we need to get started. We have the config files. We have the mod uh, that we're actually going to be running on our server. You'll notice that a couple of them inside here um, will actually have this .off, just .off extension. And these are mods that we've disabled by default. So if you want to turn them back on, just go ahead and if you just delete this, uh, the .off and then hit enter it'll say do you want to change the extension it'll be different and you're like yeah no I know what I'm doing so go ahead that'll do it and that'll actually turn the mod back on um, so let me just go back up here now the difference between running it on a Mac and uh, Linux and running it on something like Windows is just here you just need to either if you're on Windows run launch.bat or if you're on Mac um, open up terminal and change directory into this folder and run 
launch.sh. And you might have a, a, a couple of problems. It, it, it depends on your system, really. Um, it can be kind of a pain in the butt, but really, if you want to just do CD and then drag the folder in to the terminal, it'll automatically change the directory there for you, and then just do uh, dot forward slash launch that sh and hit it and it should find this file in this folder and run it for you um, so then you'll be all set now the next thing we got to do is we have to modify server properties we don't actually have to modify this um, but if we go ahead and look we have a couple options here that you might want to be aware of the first is the server port if you're running well oh, don't care the first is a server port, so if you are running a couple different servers on your machine, you're going to want to change this for each um, different server that you add. Uh, this is actually, if you're doing port forwarding so that your buddies can, can also join in the fun, you're going to have to make sure and you remember to change this um, both here and in your router. It's really not that big a deal um, if you know what you're doing. Um, if you don't, that's kind of a separate discussion in itself. Port forwarding depends on your router and can kind of suck and there are tools out there that can help with that um, and then finally the level type is really what you're going to want to check as well um, we have it set to biomes of plenty by default which gives some really cool biomes they're you know roughly a large size not too not too insane um, but of course you have large biome flat and ATG um, alternate terrain generation is actually a mod that is off by default so if you want to use this remember to, to turn it back on in the in the mod properties and so just remember what this is because you're going to need it later. 25565 is the default port. Um, and I'll show you when we're going to need that in a minute. And then maybe if you wanted to change, you know, the message of the day down here. Or you could just leave it so everybody knows that you're rocking out and staying awesome. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start launch.bat. And this is actually going to load up our system. Now, it is standard Minecraft to have just an absolute crap load of errors. They love to do errors and it just is very annoying. I should also mention too, while that's still spooling up in the background, that if you need to modify how much memory you're giving the server, go ahead and, and edit the launch.bat or the launch.sh. Oh, look, it's already loaded in the back. Um, and all you need to do is if you edit one of these, um, this is XMS is the minimum amount of memory that it'll have and XMX XMX, yeah, is the maximum amount. So if you wanted to give it 4 gig, you would just change this to 4 instead of 2. Okay, so it looks like everything is spooled up here. And this is kind of how you know when you see these uh, dimension things come on. That's, that, that pretty much means you're good to go. And there you go. That's your server is now up and running. And when people connect to it, remember we set um, the port was 25565. So on my computer, on my machine, I would say localhost uh, to colon 25565 is the is the server that I'm going to connect to. Everybody else would type in my IP address and the same port 25565. Anybody that's outside of my local area network and is actually maybe in you know like a different building or um, across the world or whatever, I mean, you're going to have to set up port forwarding for them and basically you tell your router that anytime somebody tries to access this port on your public IP it routes to this computer and uses maybe a different port or whatever, depending on how secure you want to get it. And so there you go. There's your ISIN server. It's up and running. Installing the client is fairly easy, and it's done actually through the official public Technic launcher. So come back to the main uh, page here. We'll go to download the client. This is going to take us to uh, Technic Pack's main website, and these stats are just, I think, from they're like two days old. So. Um, there's actually the server download link on here, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'll assume you haven't ever downloaded this, so if you have, just skip ahead. Um, but we'll go and we'll click download, and then we're on Windows, so it's going to download. And I already ha actually have it downloaded, but it'll download this thing called technicalauncher.exe. If you're on a Mac, it downloads technicalauncher.jar, and you just run it the same way. Um, once that's downloaded, whoops, I closed that a little too early. Once that's downloaded, you're going to go and see how I have it here in my downloads folder. Um, and if we go ahead and run it, it'll it'll load itself up. It might update itself, and it'll ask you to log into your account. And you just go ahead and use your official Minecraft um, username and password. And then you can leave all this the same install folder. That's fine. This is act actually 
the default directory. It, of course, is recommended. And this is where we're going to have to go um, if we need to modify anything. But I'll show you an easy way to get there. So we'll just do install, standard install, standard default directory. Everything should be happy. And this is where we're going to come in, and we're going to go ahead and log in. All right, here we finally go. I actually had to <laughs> reset my account. I forgot my password. Um, so if we go into up at the top here, you see discover mod packs. We're going to go here. And what we're going to have to do is add a new mod pack. And if we go ahead and say Ice Henge here, in the search up, if we go ahead and type Ice Henge up here in the search, um, you'll see that it comes up. And there's my little icon, everything cool, just like we saw on the main page. And we're going to go ahead and click Install. And it'll go ahead and it'll actually download everything. Um, and it'll always keep you up to date. If you ever need to change anything, this is probably good to cover while we're waiting. Um, there's a thing right here called Mod Pack Options. And um, generally, you're going to want to go with the recommended version. We can see that the latest version is actually 2.2. It is recommended. Um, this button right here will give you actually an easy way to get into the folder where it just installed this new Mod Pack which is good because we're going to need to put the resource file for this fax texture pack right in here but we'll do that in the next section so we'll just wait a minute and we'll come back as soon as this is all set okay and once that's finally finished installing and it installs minecraft and everything you'll notice that the button here changes to play and if we go ahead and click this it'll actually um, it'll run the uh, dependency loader by uh, chicken bones and it will load up the where's my little console window there you go one of the cool additions that we have I forgot to mention before oh, stupid windows is we actually have a progress bar which is kinda cool um, just remember that you might have a slowdown here um, some common problems are the version checking tends to slow things down another problem that you might have is you didn't give it enough memory and so you'll have to go back into the launcher settings in the Technic Launcher and maybe give it a little more memory. Um, but then everything will load up. And if you are using a, a texture pack, that's a great way to run out of memory. So just be mindful of those few things. And we will just come back in a minute when this has fully loaded up. I suppose this is a great time to tell you about how to change your memory settings because I totally forgot and you're totally going to need to do it. Back in the main launcher, go to Launcher Options, go to Java Settings, Memory. So I have a crap load of memory that I can assign to this. You're probably going to want to give it, I don't know, as, honestly, as many as you can spare. I'll give mine 6 gig. I had it set to 1 gig, and it absolutely crashed because it's doing a ton. So make sure you set your Java Settings, and then go back and click this X, and then let's try that again. Also, there's an option to enable the console in the Java launcher, or the Technic launcher settings, so that you can kind of see what it's actually doing, and you'll know if it's if it's actually hanging up. So let's just go through that all again. Sorry about that. Let's try now. Okay, so here we go. For me, that took less than two minutes. Um, I'm not sure. It is a it is a hefty pack. If you look here, we got 189 mods active. So just be aware of that. Um, if it takes a little longer than that for you, no problem. If it takes like 20 minutes, you probably didn't give it enough memory. You should go back and check that out. So let's look at how to connect to a multi. So let's a multiplayer. Let's go ahead and add server. We'll just call it Minecraft server, or whatever. And I have one running on my local host. So 25565. Remember, you find that information out. This IP right here. Um, or the port, excuse me, you find that out in the server properties file of your server. If it's running on your computer, you can probably get away with typing in localhost. Um, if it's running on someone else's computer in your house or in your building, you would type their LAN IP address, um, uh, which you can find typically by going like down here and then, yeah, just in your network, you'll find it. Um, if it's somebody else's computer remotely, if you're connecting to, if you're a plat donor and you're connecting to one of our servers, then it'll likely be a URL or an IP address. And the subject of how to find that is kind of outside of the scope of this. But um, hide address, yeah, you want to. And now we'll go ahead. There we go. Ice Engine 2.2 server, and now we can connect to this sucker. 
And here we go. Oh yeah. What? What? Let me just make this a little bigger. This is what we're all about, folks. Right here. Boom. I put together this crappy little um. This little place. Actually, this this start. Let me just make sure. Oh, I'm not in creative mode. So this is. <laughs> if you have a server, this is how to make yourself creative mode. Op. Ingram. And then, whoops. So we'll go to creative mode here. This is actually a pretty sweet looking starting area. Um, I just kind of whip this together in five minutes or so. I will post this download for this world. It's actually kind of cool. This is a great starting area. You got like a bunch of great options here. And this little hut actually, um, it's kind of protected from the baddies. You can get up and down using these things called elevator blocks. You're gonna, they're going to change your life. Um, and there's a couple baddies right there. That guy's not a baddie. You're going to want to check him out. Um, he lets you fly. So <clears throat> this is like a little demo of what you can kind of do in the pack. Again, it's really crappy looking. Um, carpenter doors, chisel blocks, and there's tables, trophies. There's witchery stuff. Um, there, I mean, there's like... There's a couple stuff I hid. There's like stuff hidden everywhere. You got like chairs and stuff you can do now. This is all really, really basic um, bookshelves. This is an actual bookshelf that you can interact with. Um, candles. Thomcraft is in here. Thomcraft 4. We were actually one of only four mod packs that were allowed to have uh, Thomcraft 4 until he kind of changed um, his terms of service. Uh, here's uh, Tinker's Contract Smeltery is in there. And the Abyssal Hole. This is a warp door. If you do not know about dimensional doors, check out our tutorial on these. These are amazing. Um, whoop. Yeah. Real time warping. And oh, look at this. Oh, a steadfast drone. You better watch out. Start spawning some baddies down here. So. So this is cool. This is like a little demo world. I will post this up there, and I will put the seed information for those who are so freaking obsessed with the seed. Um, I will put that uh, in the download or in the description of the video as well. So there you go. That's how to install the client and connect to a server. So next, what we'll do is if you do not like default Minecraft textures and you're like most people, you know what? Actually, this kind of grows on me. Every once in a while, I'm just totally okay with it. Um, but if you want to install a resource pack, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the website. Right here, there is a Sfax Texture Pack button. Um, and this is kind of a temporary uh, thing. Go ahead and download Sfax for Icehenge. As soon as that's done downloading, we'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so as soon as you have this download, go ahead and find it. And it's going to be uh, Mad Shemmy's the guy who put together the entire thing for us. So we are going to go... Um, back in the game here, you're going to go Options, uh, Resource Packs, Open Resource Pack Folder. Now that should work on Mac and Windows, and it's definitely a lot easier. Um, and then literally all you do is drag and drop that thing in there, go back over to here, and select it in the window. And what it's going to do is it's going to load, I think if we look at the console, uh, maybe not. Um, it's actually going to load, it'll lock up a little bit. It's going to load the entire texture pack into memory. So here we go. See how everything's different already? Um, we'll go ahead done and back to game and now check it out everything looks completely different actually um, we have like shaders and everything um, not shaders in this pack but this pack can handle shaders you notice everything's a lot smoother it's not so grainy um, it is very like you have here's your piece of steak and your bricks and everything it is very very cool um, this is a great mod pack your beds will change uh, excuse me texture pack um, there's also your mobs will actually have um, different textures so you have different colored different looking zombies different colored creepers um, these guys look cool you know there's a, there's a great texture pack um, grass looks different everything looks different so that's how to install those in fact even these chisel blocks look different so just be aware of that too it make, really makes everything look cool so there you go that's how to install the Sfax texture pack for Ice Edge I mentioned that I'll put that world that we were just in, I'll put that for download. Um, so when you get that, you're just going to download it. There'll be a little tutorial file in there, a really quick text file that tells you exactly what we're about to do now. But basically, open up your Icehenge server folder, and inside there, there's this folder called World. 
all we're going to do is swap those out. So just name this like world.old or something. That's fine. Take the new world download and just copy it right in there. And you should see world. And there you go. And then do launch that bad again. Start your server up. Good to go. And you now have that pretty sweet seed that we were just uh, checking out. If at any point you ever need any help, a great way to get help is to go to um, the main IceHenge page here and click forums or just go to forums.themindcrafters.com and we have actually the forums here there is an entire section dedicated just to IceHenge so if you have a bug request, a mod request, uh, just a general comment um, and I just realized I completely forgot to do this with the last world download but um, I'll do that with the world download for this video um, I'll just we'll put some world downloads in there that are specific to IceHenge and then it, of course any announcements that we have um, will also go here so for example the IceHenge 2.2 uh, changelog it was actually posted as an announcement so this is a great resource to come in and find um, different information if you need it we also have um, some Ed Lobach one of the uh, TMC lieutenants went through and actually put a ton of videos in here which is pretty flipping awesome so um, and these are all the videos from us from YouTube it's a lot easier to organize on a forum that you control rather than YouTube so a uh, great resource on the forums and um, uh, there is a, again a resource section specifically for IceHenge if you need any help at all so guys that's basically it that's it that's IceHenge 2.2 it's out it's awesome probably should go download it right now if you haven't already been downloading it as we've been talking um, you could have been playing it already. This video is so stinking long by accident. I didn't intend for it to be so long, but there you go. So IceEngine 2.2 is out. Check the change log. Get the server. Get the client. Get your friends. You have permission to make videos using IceEngine 2.2. You have permission to do that. You have permission to start your own server. You have permission to start your own server and charge. I don't know if you can charge people. That we don't care if you charge people. Um, you can definitely have a private server. You can definitely have a public server. The only thing you can't do, as far as I know, um, is repackage it and say that it's yours. Because we have permissions. Those permissions do not extend to you. Um, those are permissions given directly to us from the official mod authors. And if you are an official mod author and if you're very um, concerned about permissions, we have uh, a link both here on the web page, uh, all the way down the bottom. And we also have... Uh, the permissions information available on request. So make sure to get that up, get that rocking, make a thing. If you have a server, let us know about it. Um, if you want people, if you want it to be public and you want people to be able to join, if you want it private and you want people to be able to, to request to join, let us know. Um, we will put it either on the, the public forum or even on this page if it's a, if it's a beastie. So um, if you have builds, if you built anything, guys, send us your pictures. We would love them. And if it's really good, it might actually make the Facebook page. Um, if it's if it's like absolutely mind-bogglingly good, it might actually get a video on the YouTube channel. So that's definitely uh, make sure you do that. All right, that should be all you need to know. If you do not, if there's something else, either hit us up in IRC, hit us up on the Minecrafters Facebook page, hit us up on our forums, hit us up on the Minecrafters.com. We are there. You can also follow us at Ingram. That's with three M's, I-N-G-R-I-M-M-M, -M -M, on Twitter. And again, we are on Facebook, and obviously we're on YouTube. So, guys, that is all. Thanks for watching. Enjoy IceHenge 2.2, and stay poised.